Okay. Uh, today's session is a part of the webinar series hosted by the participants of Diploma de Master Trainer program conceptualized and delivered by Mr. Arun Subramanian. It is a pleasure to introduce him to all of you. Mr. Subramanian is a multifaceted individual with over 45 years of corporate experience, 30 years of which as a business leader and entrepreneur. He is also a very successful international master trainer whose programs are attended by participants across the globe. Uh, he is cognitive science expert specializing in training through implicit learning techniques, uh, which is immensely important for an online platform. He coaches, mentors, teachers, and trainers across the globe to drive implicit learning. Looking into the need of the people to retrain upskill and cross-skill because of the changing employment landscape caused by the pa pandemic, uh, Mr. Arun started training, uh, train the uh, uh, online trainer program, Diploma de Master Trainer. We assemble here every day from Monday to Thursday uh, for a presentation from one member of the DMT Batch 1. I take this opportunity to invite Mr. Arun to say a few words about his vision for the future. Thank you, Mr. Rajender, for this invitation. It would be a pleasure to address this August crowd. Welcome, friends, for one more evening of learning. When the pandemic struck, life started sliding into fear, despair, and uncertainty locked at home, not, not knowing what was going to happen. People were becoming mentally ill, something which was more dangerous than becoming physically ill or being afflicted by COVID and dying. Because as someone said, the brave die but once and the fearful die every second. It was at such moment that I came across a video. I want you to see this video. Sir, I have a car in the car. Sir, I have a car in the car. to ask all of you what has this video got to do with the pandemic striking this earth it was january 2020 the earth the population 7.87 billion had come to a grinding halt 
what has this video got to do with it? Can any one of you kindly unmute and tell me? I, I think someone has to take the initiative, sir. Be proactive. Can Can here. Be proactive excellent. 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 I felt that something had to be done in my own small and limited way. Life had come to a standstill. There was only fear, despair, and uncertainty all around in the minds and hearts of people. People were becoming mentally ill and dying every second out of fear, uncertainty. To keep people occupied and to let them know that they are not alone in it, I decided that I should start a community called Participate UC and here. I started sharing my experience and knowledge with whoever was willing to spend a few minutes of their time with me. The community slowly started growing. People came forward initially slowly, but with gathering momentum. And by the time we were seven or eight months old, it was a vibrant community of 7,500 people, 7,000 odd people sharing their experience with each other every evening. COVID was on its way to be defeated. It grew to be a robust community with a deep sense of belonging and people started helping each other emotionally, professionally, financially. Those who lost their jobs got their jobs through their friends. There was emotional support from everyone. In some cases where there was some major tragedy, financially also we all could support each other. But things were changing very fast. There was a major paradigm shift that was happening in the job market and society as a whole. It was absolutely essential to adjust to the changing job market by responding to it. The question in front of me was, how can I be of use to the society I'm a part of? And how can I contribute in my own small way? I realized that the only response was to change, to this change was to help the world upskill and reskill itself. Making people realize the importance of reskilling and upskilling was a major task. For that, we required a huge number of trainers who could help train people and upskill and reskill them. First, it was necessary to bring all the trainers onto a single platform. The question in front of me was, how do I do it? Where do I go looking for these trainers and how do we get them all onto a single platform in these difficult times? when each one of us was locked in our own house. As I was breaking my head on how to solve the problem, it struck me that if you want to catch an ant, you should not go in search of it. Instead, place a grain of sugar on the floor and the ants will automatically come. As I was breaking my head, this idea came. I announced a competition for the trainers called the World's Best Trainers Competition. The world's best trainers competition on 11th of April, 139 trainers from all over the world, from across the globe, came and participated, made it a gigantic success. We had such an excellent time for four months, exchanging ideas, learning from each other, from techniques, from content, from creation, from strategy. It was a wonderful session. But during the course of the competition, we, the organizers, as well as the participants, realized that online training was very different from classroom training that the world was habituated to. There were some major differences in the way training is conducted on the online platform. And being a cognitive science expert and a person who has always believed in implicit learning, I decided it is time to adopt to the changing days and all of us together decided that we will launch Diploma the Master Trainer, a train the online trainer course, which helps trainers learn, which helps people learn and create an alternate source of income through online training. The second course is starting, second batch is starting on 15th of April, and the first batch is going on. Friends, it is a presentation by those people who are there in the first batch those experts who are there in the first batch that we have all assembled to listen to. This program is there every day from 6 to 8 p.m. We are here today to witness the participant of the first batch, one such expert, Mr. Suresh Ramaratnam, to tell you more about him 
I hand over the platform to Mr. Rajendra Ji again. Sit back, enjoy, let the learning continue. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Arun, sir, for sharing your vision about uh, our DMT uh, Diploma de Master Trainer Program. Uh, before we start the main presentation, uh, let us hear from one of the participants of this uh, DMT program, uh, how this, this has helped uh, or how this has impacted her. Our impact speaker for this evening has been in the educational education field as a teacher for more than 20 years. She practices integrated counseling in which modalities like REBT, Robert Karkoff model, TA, NLP, and IEMT are used for a multimodal approach to impact the mindset change. Let us welcome here our impact speaker, Ms. Nisreen Gandhi. Thank you, Rajendraji, for introducing me to this esteemed gathering here today. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Third March, 2020 was the day I resigned from my school job as a full-time teacher, having taught in that institution for 11 years. Soon after the pandemic, having taken an unexpected turn resulted in countries going into lockdown. This was the stage that kindled within me aspirations to fuel my motive of having flexible working hours and to be my own boss. Through the remainder of the year and in the first quarter of 2021, I continued teaching part-time and practicing counseling, taking quite a few courses to upgrade my knowledge. It was in May 2021 that a friend introduced me to the TTBC platform and I dived in with all the enthusiasm of a first timer, exploring and treating this experience as a learning ground. I gave my first presentation, Mind Your Mind, on the TTBC platform. Since I had not viewed it as a competition, I was quite pleasantly surprised to learn that I got selected to round two. Through all of this, during the weekends, I had started attending Mr. Arun Subramanian's short programs. What caught my attention and piqued my interest each time was the finesse and ease with which he delivered his presentations. This, I believe, was the time the seeds of becoming a trainer got sown in the fertile plains of my mind. My conscious mind, however, still started throwing up questions regarding how it would be beneficial to my field of work as a teacher, counselor, coach. All these queries were satisfactorily quenched when I connected with Mr. Subramanian in July, 2021 when he spoke to me about implicit learning, Bloom's taxonomy and the language of delivery, all of which was so clearly related to my field of expertise. Taking a leap of faith, I say that because I was still unsure as to what it entailed for me in how I would be taking it forward. I enrolled myself as a participant in this first batch of the DDMT course. My main motive behind this was to add value to my life by giving it a more clarified direction and purpose. Psychology has always been my pet peeve for a very long time now. And slowly, as the course progressed, I discovered my fascination with cognitive science and its application in my personal and professional life deepening. To add to it, the course faculty and resource persons, Mr. Arun Subramanian and Mr. Vaithi Swaran Vedagiri proved to be a world apart as our mentors and facilitators. The vitality and enthusiasm with which they impart implicitly the concepts of cognitive science, psychology, 
and technical aspects of creation, management, and execution of the presentation, which is to be delivered on the digital platform, has rubbed on to all of us, with the result that it has elicited proactive participation from us participants. With this, we all fell in line with what is always being reiterated to us time and again through the course. Intention drives energy. The DDMT course really challenges us to overcome our comfort in walking a path which is free of obstacles to attain a lesser goal and inspires us to create a deep yearning to walk the path which may have obstacles to attain a lofty goal, which is worth striving for. The well-designed and curated curriculum of the course is par excellence in targeting all training requirements with an in-depth needs analysis. The DDMT course calls for tremendous commitment from the participants to achieve the highest levels of their personal competencies in this rapidly transforming world of digitalization. If one wants to become a master trainer, here lies an amazing opportunity to learn and grow together. This course is filled with tremendous opportunity to give wings to your aspirations. The sky is the limit when you enable your wings to explore its vastness. I would like to thank Mr. Arun Subramanian and Mr. Vaitiswaran Vedagiri for being the guiding light in the course of my evolving through this learning. And all my fellow cohorts in this batch for adding more life and color to my experience making it such a wonderful part of my journey. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nisrinji, for sharing your experience about the DMT program in those beautiful words. Uh, okay, now we will move to the, to the uh, main presentation of the day. Uh, our resource person for this evening uh, has 34 years of corporate experience in the pharma sales and training. He headed a strategic business unit in a reputed pharma company before he started his own training and counseling uh, and consulting business two years ago, where uh, uh, he uh, helps people with organizational development and genetic brain profiling. He is an NLP practitioner, national council member of ISTD, member national association of transaction analysis and a certified coach uh, and a certified coach let us welcome with applause our today's organizational development specialist leader uh, mr suresh ramratnam over to you mr suresh ramratnam for thank a topic much, uh, for of uh, success building world class organization thank you very much uh, sapreji for your kind words and uh, Welcome everyone for this program. The moment we talk about success, success can never come without taking the blessing of Lord Ganesha. He has the broad years, which talks about uh, how to improve your listening, the small eyes to concentrate, the big head to think uh, big, and the rope to pull your goal and the blessings to guide in success. And I take his blessings and I also wish everyone sitting here that you get the blessings of Lord Ganesha. And as rightly pointed out by Nisrim ma'am, intention drives success and Lord Ganesha drives the intention. Not only that, you would find that very clearly in the Bhagavad Gita, when uh, in the Gurushetra war field, Arjuna was actually having confusion and he was wondering what exactly is the problem, why people are not able to become successful, what to be done. He talks about 
uh, Krishna says, we are kept away from our goals, not by obstacles, but by a clear path of a lesser goal. So I also wish that we think big, dream big, like what Abdul Kalam talked about, and ensure that we are achieving bigger. And that's exactly what I want to convey through this program of Secret of Success of creating world-class organization. The moment I talk about world-class organization, it's not like uh, something, a magic van or something which is like Alibaba and 40 Thieves where you say, Kulja, uh, Simpson and things happen. It is a process which you will find it very ideal. And let's go ahead and look at the process. Before we look into it, I just want you to look at this picture and tell me what is the connection that is there between a bullet train and building world-class organization very successfully. You can unmute and you can say. It's the speed and agility. Speed. Speed and agility. Wonderful. Very good. The consistency. Consistency. Can you can you please uh, just sorry repeat the question again? What is the correlation between this bullet train and secret of success in building a world class organization? So, first thing is, you know, time saving. Time is a big resource in our life. We have fixed time. All other resources are very flexible. So, instead of, you know, taking 10 hours, it will take just two hours. So, that means eight hours multiply by so all resources we have, will be saving. Thank you so much. Thank you. The speed, accuracy, and discipline. And last speed, one. Speed, accuracy, and discipline. Thank you. Thank you, friends. As yes, you can yeah. clearly, uh, yeah, someone want to say? Yeah, please, okay. please go ahead. Uh, speed has to match with the current trend. Uh, so okay. the world class, uh, even uh, training also, because people don't have much time. Yeah. So it is just making it crisp and uh, clear within a short period of time. Thank you. Thank you very much for Sorry. everyone. Sorry. Uh, yeah. My take is uh, it's an accelerated learning process. Okay, thank you very much. We will go ahead because we have got a lot to cover. As you rightly pointed out, from the days of a steam engine to a diesel to electric engine, a bullet, if you look into it, it adapts to the latest technology. It reflects speed. It reflects the design to ensure. And it has got a direction and a destination. And if you look into it, it is running on the rails, which are parallel, which takes a process for which any organization is also like that. An organization to be successful, it has to be agile, it has to adapt to technology, it has to be time conscious, it has to serve the uh, customer, it has to be comfortable, the journey has to be comfortable, and you will find that it has to have a process orientation, time consciousness, and ensure everything, the destination is achieved without any other complications. Thank you very much for your contribution for this part. Now, I want you to look at a uh, thing. You know that when we look at creating organization, it's not just a journey, which is very, very easy. Here, you will see in this video what exactly happened.
Suresh, if there were to be some audio, uh, I think you're not able to hear. Audio, you're not able to hear? Audio part, no. One second. Thank you, thank you very much. Now are you able to hear? Yes, yes. Is the pharmacist in here? <coughs> I'm looking for 10 liters of Ligroin. You won't get those stains out of that dress. Better buy a new one. It's not for my dress. It's for my carriage. Are you trying to poison your horses? Do you have 10 liters or not? Friends, today, Mercedes-Benz may be a big name, but way back, if you look into it, when it was started, you would found that the first lady, the Bertha Benz, when she was driving, she was part of which? Everyone was puzzled. Everyone were driving horse to cart, but here is a lady who was driving an automobile. So anything new, anything bigger, anything that is innovative is brought in, people always first ready for it. And that's one thing you have to overcome. You have to be a successful business man or a business woman. As you can see, what exactly the thing is, the weaver bird is skillfully building a, a 
wonderful nest. But what is the issue that happens with most of the people who are innovative or skillful is they feel that they alone can build great organizations. Friends, do you think one man can build a world-class organization even if he has got a vision, passion, hard work? What's the answer? Impossible. Impossible. It's very no difficult. Way. You need a huge number of people who are to be supportive so that you can build a thing. There is no single tree can become a wood. That's what is the thing is. Every river, if you look into it, starts with a small way, whether it is at Kudugu in Kaveri or in case of Gangotri, uh, saying Gomuk. If you look into it, the river is very small, but as it moves ahead, it expands, and as it reaches the sea or the ocean, its tributaries expand. And that's exactly how organizations are also built. So, have a path which is rocky, it has to travel in mountains, gravels, and hard sand, and it has to reach the plain, and it has to reach the ocean. And that's exactly how the organization also are built, right? Okay, now what we will do is, here is a very interesting thing that was talked about by McKenzie, which talks about the future of COVID, of work after COVID. It, he says that the physical proximity, whatever the related job, whether it's medical, personal, on-site, leisure, home, or in case of indoor promotion or other aspects, it's going to be challenged and there is going to be new order of business that's going to happen. In fact, IBM, after the COVID, came out with a survey and it said that organizations need to accelerate into digital transformation. And 66 personal organization today adapt digital organization and platform-based business. And you'll also find that the partner network and other collaboration is how business is built. Here you see a set of companies. These companies have grown in spite of adverse situations. Now I want to all of you to have a break up and tell me what made these companies to grow even in this adverse situation. The time you have is 10 minutes and we have got 53 people, so we can have five groups. Can I take the help? Sapreji, can you do that? Can you create the breakout room, five breakout rooms? Yes, we will do that. Thank you. Exactly 10 minutes from now, and in my first thing, it says 654. Sharp by 74, we'll come back. And we will talk about how these companies which are displayed here are able to grow even in adverse situations. I want everyone to take a screenshot, if at all, these are some of the well organizations be knowing about it.
or if they are all in the main room, you have not been allocated. Is it so? Dr. Sudhakar, sir, Ravi, sir, Suma, Wilson, Rosli, ma'am. Great, I think everyone are back to the main room. So you hope you had a great discussion. Let's start uh, from team five. Team five, anyone, your chosen leader can represent and uh, present your point of view. Just two minutes crisply to the point. Team five. Hari, you are representing. Hani. So, Hani Rabi? Yeah, yeah. Please, please. Yes, okay. So, I'm Hani Rai. I'm representing from Team 5. Uh, so, we uh, got wonderful points from uh, Vishal Rajalakshmi Tasneem. Uh, Mr. Vishal, so he said that all these companies which are shown in the image, they have adopted to the changing dynamics of the environment. For example, Tesla. So they have envisaged future technology for comfort of the car. And uh, when it comes to Zomato, uh, coming up with, okay, so Tesla, so I want to say one more point. He said that was the driving driverless car. Okay. So next is Zomato. Uh, he also mentioned that according to the habit, that they are coming up with a free delivery. Uh, next, uh, Rajalakshmi. Okay, Vishal, do you want to add anything here? You carry on, Hari. You carry on. You carry right. on. Okay. Uh, Ms. Rajalakshmi, she said about, uh, she finds one key to success is identified the need to success. So they all have identified the need to success and then working towards that. Uh, the, for example, ID has found out so many idlis are being consumed per day. So all those. Then uh, Ms. Tasneem, she has told about these organizations, one of the reasons that they have taken care of their internal customers, that's their employees. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good points. Customer, uh, future technology, adapting to change, identifying need for success, and also looking at customer convenience. Now, Team 4, can I request someone, a representative of Team 4, to talk about this particular aspect of what made these companies world class? Uh, I'll be representing Team 4. Good evening. Yeah, Sujata, ma'am. 
please. Yes, these are the inputs from my team members. The first thing we've all uh, seconded the great quote that every crisis paves way for an opportunity and pandemic certainly has helped assert, you know, certain uh, verticals and domains. That is the e-commerce has been accelerated in leaps and bounds, which people never thought that would happen. Then another team member has added that these people have, you know, moved into uh, diversified into areas which were in dire need and they sustained their commerce there. I think that has come as a great help. Then uh, a business model that adapted to the change in the market requirements is an input of another team member that is a preempted business model. And I think that has fetched them in greater measures. Then focus, which leads to consistency or rather maintains a consistent approach is one of the inputs from another member. Then uh, Subraju sir has added that they have leaped, you know, leaps and bounds the phrases as it goes, accentuating their business. And I think that has made them a great uh, shareholder in the Indian market or maybe on the global platform as well. In particular, talking about Baiju's, the online teaching learning, I think that's going to become the new normal now. And it has been, or rather it is one of the greatest and innovative attempt. And coming to ID, one of the um, uh, domestic uh, brands and the Indian household is up in arms with it. I think that ready-made provision of food and whatever, I think that also has made it a master hit with the you know, business e-commerce because they say the way to a man's heart is via the stomach. And when ID can provide this, I'm definitely sure that it is being accepted in every Indian household. So these are the inputs in particular by Jews and ID, but others, all team members pulled up from team four. Thank you, thank you very much. Particularly, I really enjoyed every crisis pays an opportunity uh, and the e-commerce part of it. Now, team three. Who's representing team three? Aninji is giving. Yes, who's representing the team? I can see something is displayed. I think you're muted, Mr. Ganeshan. You're muted. Mr. Ganeshan, you're muted. Anilji, up muted. Anilji, up unmute Karo. Yeah, Anil, sir. Unmute yourself. Anil, sir, I have to unmute. Anil, sir, unmute yourself. Oh, Anil, sir, is uh, representing the team. Anilji. Unmute okay, yourself, it, Anilji. Otherwise, someone else, please. Yeah, yeah. Is it, am I unmuted? Yeah, yeah. you are unmuted. Uh, can you listen to me? It was yeah, clear. please, please, go ahead. Please, we are in group number three, comprises Mr. Andarji, Mr. Indarjitu, Mr. Nayak, Mr. Ganeshan, Mr. Rehan, Shamji, Devlin, and myself. First point is change in the mantra. They accepted the change with the change of time, like Tesla, they went to electric model. So, and they did, did lot of research. Now they are very much in forefront. They have already seen the, the long sighted visions. So second point, constant change of model and strategies, like they introduced AI. They, these, these companies, all companies, the artificial intelligence, they introduced and e-commerce. And not only they introduced, but they, they formulated very simple and user-friendly models so that people can understand those things. Then the third point is they converted threats into opportunities. So they prepared themselves so that, you know, they and a lot of resilience and a lot of training they had with the employees so that they, they thought this is the time they can have even more opportunities. And online platform they started using and training their staff and user-friendly application, they made it so that people are very happy. Then they became more customer-centric because of, because of this uh, pandemic. 
so the everybody was working from home and their expenses they reduced and then they passed on those things as a discount to the customers to attract the most customer and to have more competition uh, with their uh, competitors then they embraced more innovation like biju it started lot of online training online learning and so these are some of the story and also they they made one officer he will make lot of stories he will tell lot of stories and they so some of the companies they had chief story officer you know like chief information officer they will talk to their family members and ask their welfare and everything so that the things are uh, cordial at their hand and more productivity is there thank you so much yeah, thank you very much it was very good use of friendly innovation looking for opportunities and taking care of the family members also and uh, taking those are good inputs which i take now to team 2 please team 2 who is representing team 2 team 2 yeah i will represent uh, team 2 i will just share my yeah please magesh ji magesh ji please go ahead so in our group uh, we discussed uh, the following uh, the following are that the swot analysis has to be done and then the law of contradiction says that where one one place there is loss there is an opportunity somewhere so that opportunity has to be used and uh, people should ident identify the distinctive competence and uh, make use of their strongness and their positive points competition should be taken advantage and uh, leaders in the field should strive against competition and make the best out of it and uh, people also should be motivated for example paper boys should uh, were called delivery executives so such kind of motivation has to be given we found out such points thank you thank you giving respect by giving asking a paper boy to be called as delivery executives thank you now to team 1 team 2 Uh, Atul sir, I'm can you summarize? Yeah, I'm not clear. Yes, we have, got, uh, we have come to a conclusion that there are three factors which are to be noted in this uh, regard. Agility, number one. Agility. They had the agility to adapt to the new normal conditions. Wonderful. And they had the speed, and they were technical technical savvy when compared to their competitors. That's why they had a very good market, like uh, Zomato. and uh, amazon all these platforms and of course uh, byju they really try to cater the needs of uh, all the parents because parents are very much worried that their children are not going to schools and they were not very happy with the online program conducted by the respective schools so they were able to uh, bring in a concept of two teachers concept and uh, they were successful in that way tesla they are environment friendly and uh, the government now announced that 15 years you cannot use your car and uh, all fossil fuels are going to give place a uh, give way to electricity so in that way tesla was successful id i i should say that entire edible industry uh, had a very good market during covid more than 100% growth in fact one of my friends is owner of uh, idm jinjali oil mr v r muthu he said he had 150% growth during covid period so in that way i want to conclude that the agility speed and technical savvy of the companies made them as uh, number one or uh, the best uh, companies around thank you thank you very much a uh, lot of inputs where we have talked about inputs connected with agility speed tech savvy and uh, looking at opportunities even in crisis customer centric diversifying focused and adapting to new technology all these things great points let's uh, go ahead and uh, look at what next see basically if you just look into it great companies they have a 
advantage that they are not only upgrading the technology as rightly pointed out, but they are also innovative. They are employee friendly. Their customer relationships is very strong. Optimizing resources, value for money is there. And they are one people who are identifying the needs and coming out with products which are going to meet the needs at pocket friendly prices. And they have competition which makes them go beyond and become one which is surpassing other competition and thereby locking their customers. There are several factors. In fact, when you look at the secret of success in building world-class organization, there can be many things that can be talked about. But today, as a part of this slice, we are going to focus only on one part of this particular points, which we'll just make it out. We'll go ahead, right. Can you identify this person? Richard, can, Richard, huh? Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Uh, what is the company is? Virgin. Huh? Virgin. 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 Okay. Virgin Atlantic. Yeah, Virgin. So do you know what he is talking about when it comes to success of building a world-class organization? Guess, can I have some wild guess? Successful brands are about people and not about branding. They should keep the people in, in their main motive and not the brand for their uh, this thing, company. Good point. Who's this? Who said that? Mahesh. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Who else? What else? Okay, friends. What he said is, when you talk about people, usually companies focus on customers. I would divide this customers into two groups, external customer and internal customer. Usually our focus will be on the external customer and internal customer is given a limited amount of focus. But what Richard Branson talks about is the employees are the first. Why? Because it is your employees who is producing the products. It's your employees who are serving the customer. It's your employees who are bringing quality. It's your employees who are dealing with the issues. It's your employees who are taking care of the distribution and everything connected with your business is all handled by employees. So what Richard Branson talks about is, Take care of your employees and take care of them to such a level that employees first, then they will take care of the customers and they will bring in more customers when they are engaged. So we'll be looking at today more on this particular slice on employment and what are the things employees are going to work out. What is recruitment in employees? How do you recruit such type of a great employees so that you can build a world-class organization? Fine, friends, I want you all to just once again, look at uh, this particular aspect when it comes to selecting the right employee. List out all the essential points for talent acquisition. And what do you think are the attributes you can just mention about? I want it to be interactive. So can I just look at when it comes to talent acquisition? Okay, by the way, I want to ask you people, what is the difference between talent acquisition and recruitment? Can anyone throw light on it? So what yeah, is the recruitment difference between is... uh, talent and what you say? Talent acquisition and recruitment. What is the difference? Recruitment, uh, recruit, recruitment is just adding head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, like recruit, recruitment is... Talent, talent acquisition means adding skill to the people. Yes, yes. People recruitment, recruitment is a process. Yeah. You know? And uh, sir, talent, talent recruitment is, you know, you have to see whether the person is 
good in project management or .NET or Java. So it depends upon the need of your product. What, what are the skill set you need for your product or services? Then you recruit well, as per that, that requirement. Okay. okay, so can I can I say, sir? Yes, can I? Please, please, please. So recruitment is uh, searching for the candidate, right candidate. Mm -hmm. And when you say about acquisition, the person is acquired with his skill set for a particular job. That is acquisition. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, As rightly pointed out by many, yeah. recruitment. Uh, I would like to add here one yeah, point. Please, please, quickly. Yeah, talent acquisition, it's always focused on the long term. And uh, recruitment, uh, I feel it is uh, getting the candidate. Yeah, they might focus on the right candidate, but talent acquisition also focus on the competency mapping. Yeah, who is this? Who said that? Honey Rai. Very nice. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Actually, recruitment is filling up the vacancy that is there existing in the organization, whereas talent acquisition is on the longer run, grooming employees, making them uh, world-class employees by upgrading the skill sets of these people and also ensuring uh, um, th there are two aspects when it comes to talent acquisition. There is something called as a buy method and build method, we'll be looking into it. But long-term talent acquisition, short-term it's recruitment. That's one thing I just want you to be very clear about. A attitude okay. of the employee also is important. Sorry? Attitude, attitude of the employee. Yeah, okay, that's good, thank you. Now we will look into the 3B strategy of talent acquisition. What is the 3B strategy? The first one is buy. The first one is buy. What do you mean by buying talent? What do you mean watching, by buying Watching from talent? other companies? Yeah. Watching employees from other companies? Yes, By money. talented people in the market, you identify, give them a hike and pull them towards our organization, right? That's one aspect of it. The second is build. What's the difference? Buy is, you know, mostly on middle level, three year, four year, five year experience and build, you can recruit from campus and then you can give them training and build them. Mm. Okay, okay. You know, uh, earlier companies used to focus on buying, still it's very good, but Bill is on the long term very ideal. We will also look at another one methodology, which is the third B, which is borrow. What is borrow? Borrow short time you from one company to another company, they just uh, take it or send, you may send uh, on the, uh, outside some company needs also. They may borrow from your company. TCS may borrow from IBM. IBM may borrow from some. Can when they are Let me from, give an example. Body shopping. In the, in the, when they are spared from one project, one project is finished, they can be transferred to some other project. They can borrow. Exactly. Uh, one of the aspects is, let me just give an example. When SAP was to be uh, introduced in my company, what exactly happened? We brought in employees of SAP for a specific period of time where they came in and worked with the IT professionals of our company to ensure that SAP process is established in the company. So it's a contract base, which is there technically uh, into our people who are very proficient are taken for a short duration. Okay, now that we know why build and borrow, but everything has got its own advantages and disadvantages. What are the advantages and the disadvantages of buying method? Can anyone throw light on it? Advantage, you get uh, resources on hand. For example, yeah. when Vasan Eye Care Limited started in a big way in Tamil Nadu, they poached employees from Aravind Eye Care System. All the employees are already uh, experienced so they need not train uh, freshers immediately to cater to their needs because they need experience. Else. So that's why they bought. And simultaneously, they started building also. They recruited freshers and uh, trained yeah, them. Nagalingam, sir. Nagalingam, sir, we will confine to what are the okay, okay, advantages buy. and disadvantages so only connected with yeah. buying. What are the disadvantages of buying? Uh, disadvantages, 
once uh, they are uh, they are willing to uh, be bought if some other company wants to give more they will easily go away there may not be loyalty okay. with your company loyalty okay. will That's be a good. mistake thank you thank you anyone else you the you know the disadvantage is they become liability for the company because the advantage is when you buy them they are more stable they are your employees when you recruit them and then their mindset is like a government mindset you know now we are permanent or regular this is the disadvantage they don't okay. try to grow themselves or innovate themselves okay they, they, in view of a uh, positive of time i will just make it out when you buy employees you get straight away talented people you pay them a little more and they are experienced they know the job very well and they are immediately they can plunge into the job function and start producing the sales but the disadvantage you'll find with buy method is organizational culture whether they are aligning is not very sure and mr naglim was talking loyalty you cannot expect from them there can be some other company which can poach them and they may move out and team building is becoming once again a major process in alignment team building cultural alignment vision mission these are the aspects which you have to work on so that this employee is aligned to the organizational goals when it comes to build what are the advantages you can give a lower pay groom them and build loyalty that's what taj hotels generally do they do go to the villages and recruit 8 standard 10 standard students they bring them train them as chefers and other uh, in jobs which they are waiters or other roles and then give them a job so you will find that taj hotels people do not leave loyalty is one thing which is very very strongly the positive side but what are the disadvantages it takes time it takes patience it needs the organizational financial stability to invest on people and train them and be patient to reap the benefit long term build is very ideal and borrow we know that it's a short term uh, thing and it has got its own advantage when it comes to talent acquisition there are four factors which may matters one it minimizes the attrition it saves time it reduces the risk and you get the expertise support these are the four aspects which are very very important and when it comes to the organization and comes to the talent you have to look at these aspects as a traits for you hire the first and the foremost thing you need to look into it is work ethics and integrity here if you look into it the five things that's been mentioned can you any one of you tell there is something which is very unique here has it talked about job functioning has it talked about skills no these are mostly soft skills actually what you have mentioned here basically if you look into it gentlemen people focus on the so as in an interview we look at knowledge and skill but long term work ethics attitude communication culture fit critical thinking is very important because you can any day train people but bringing in attitude bringing in critical thinking bringing in culture alignment is a difficult task soft skill so three things are very very important one is the skill fit second is the job fit and third is the cult company culture fit which you need to look into it and uh, what is very important for a dream company is you look at you know that dream companies can anyone talk about some of the dream companies in india infosys google google infosys. is there google 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 microsoft yeah, yeah. hp yeah. hcl tata uh, apple tata. Uh, oh you are all microsoft. talking about international microsoft, microsoft. okay okay tata tata tata, tata. In in india 
Tata Vipro may not Vipro. be there, but Tata is there. Tata Vipro, Vipro is there. Vipro is also there, sir. Vipro is almost within the 30, top 30. Okay. Vipro is there. Okay. Relies. So what do they do if you look into it? They care for their employees. They give an opportunity of growth. They also help training and upskilling. Employee engagement is taken care. For example, uh, how many of you know the case of Tata Hotels, the Taj yeah. Hotel fire and accident, and uh, you know that Ajmal when Kasabani entered and the terrorist attack happened. Can anyone know what exactly happened? Yeah, yeah. What exactly happened? Yes, the employees. Did. The employees were there in the hotel for till the last minute. They were helping. Uh, they were this. They stuck with the principles and the moral of the company. First and the foremost thing, they, they did not bother to save no, their actually, lives. No they employee no escaped that place. Harvard University did a research on it. No yeah. employee did escape from that place. Rather, but they started supporting the customers. They are helping the customers. In that way, it was uh, uh, the Harvard University considered it's a real a different thing because the employees, they went to the study that the employees were recruited by the company by knowing whether these uh, new people are helpful or not. They didn't go by merit, rather they consider merit also one of the things, but they personally uh, visited the institutions and found out who are the uh, people who are really considered towards others? In that way, they recruited, and that was resulted in that particular situation. So that's what the study by the Harvard University. Actually, they went to the villages. They interviewed the parents. They interviewed the other community members in the village, and they brought village uh, students, and then they groomed those people who are studying in government uh, schools. Those people who are studying the vernacular medium and they trained them and they brought about loyalty in that organization which was something as you rightly pointed out Mr. Nagalingam sir Harvard did a great study it wouldn't be a great thing if our organization are able to have employees who would like to stick and care for our customers and work for our organization growth. And that's what I mean by it. One side we see dream organization. I would say on the right side, what you see is all about dream employees, which you need to create about who can stick with you even in the thick and thin. For that, the interview process becomes very, very important. What are the aspects which we need to look into it? Okay, I just want to stop share here and to uh, look at it. I just would like to give a breakout. In fact, uh, I want uh, Sapraji, you can give a breakout. We will have a 10 minutes breakout once again. What are the enjoyable experience and what are the distasteful experience people have had when they went for interviews? When they went for? Interview. Oh, Usually, really? you know that every employee goes for an interview. Even the CEO, once upon a time, would have been an employee, would have gone for an interview, right? What are the do's and don'ts? Let me put it this way instead of putting it on placement. What are the do's and the don'ts you need to adapt when you are interviewing a candidate? So we can create a interview is perspective. Excuse me? Is Nothing it the sorry? interviewer's perspective or interviewee's perspective? Sir, both perspective bring it out. What is the ideal interview process should be? That's what I want to do. How this particular process can be enriching and it becomes a great experience. Both for the employer and for the employee. Sapreji? You can. Uh, sir, uh, how long actually we want to... Just only uh, 10 minutes. Strictly okay, because, 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, we will be running out of time, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless... Strictly, strictly on 10 minutes is what we would like to okay. work on it. Okay, sure.
Now that Is it team one? Hello? Is it team one?
I think slowly people are coming back. The breakout rooms are closed, correct? Yes, six seconds, last six seconds we have. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now 32 people have joined. Rest have they not joined? What exactly the issue is? Are there only 32 people? Or 13 and 40 has come? Okay. Right. Friends, I'm sure you have all uh, discussed about the do's and don'ts and what makes an into process effective, enjoyable. Uh, let me take from this side, this time from team one. Team one, what was the discussion? How do you think the employer as well as the employee will be happy? Okay, happy evening. The prospective employee, Right. let me put it that way. Happy evening, uh, my friends. And once again, we discussed and one of our friends uh, has shared his experience of attending an interview in a Gulf country. Uh, <laughs> Basically, in an interview, what is expected is the participant should go with thorough preparation. Like uh, the first thing will be noted, even uh, before uttering a single word, the posture, gesture, eye contact. They say first impression is the best impression. So the person has to fa face very important question. It's a very easy question on the part of the interviewer. But the interview will tell us something about you. So that it starts with that. And they'll try to find out whether this uh, interviewee, the prospective employee knows about the organization, knows about the products, knows about uh, their marketing, knows about their competitors. In that way, they try to find out. So for all that thing, interviewers should also be ready. They should have a very good listening ears to find out the attitude of the individual and the knowledge level of the individual. All these things will be tested in an interview. So in that way, both interviewer and the prospective employee have to be very conscious about the attitude, the knowledge about the organization, knowledge about the uh, competitors, knowledge about the products, etc. That's what we want to share. Thank you, thank you. From room, uh, the point which I really enjoyed is good listening, every, even the employer should have, and a correct attitude and check the knowledge, right? Thank you. Team two now. Yeah, I will just share my screen. Yeah, please. So these are the points we had. Uh, how polite are the people, the staff of the company, then giving admin support to the person, asking each employee if they want to know about the company, we should not make the, uh, the participant wait by delaying the interview process and giving, giving him guidance on where to reach and how to reach, conveying the decision in time to the employee, basic information about the culture of the employee and giving participant hospitality and other things like refreshment. So these are the, all the points we summed up in room number two. Thank you. Who are all the members who are present? Mr. Sapres, Mr. Sagir, myself, Mahesh. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, wonderful points, hospitality, culture. Would you like to know about the company? These are something which is very, very nice points that has emerged in the discussion. Now from team three, room three, please. So <laughs> I'm coming room three. We have same, but we have added Lakshmi now. Yeah. So, who's uh, representing your team? I am. I am representing Anil this side. Okay. From from employer's perspective, first I I want to say they want a, you know empl employers want best talent. They want to acquire ethical people. They want people to be more stable when they join, and they want salary. They should not seek very high salary. And mm -hmm. they want, you know, some bond, four or five Why, years. What, bond. what makes your team to think that people should not ask for high salary? Any specific thing out of curiosity? Yeah, they don't, they want to 
give them this this salary which is a market salary somebody should not ask if he is worth 1 lakh rupees he go for 2 lakhs you know fine sir thank you thank you wonderful wonderful so, good then they also want to do background verification that whatever he has committed or said on paper it is right so yeah. so then they don't say, uh, i i i am sk skipping this point don't and then for, okay. from employees perspective they want more salary more bonus more shares that company they want to prefer like microsoft you know they give lot of shares and other thing and then uh, they they want their potential to be identified whatever they are they want to be get given respect or something like this and they don't want to have long time bond they want to they don't want to be committed for 5 years or something like this then they want environment there very very friendly so good ac room and good uh, this uh, sitting places all these thing they want to be uh, environment friendly so then they also want regular entertainment outing parties tea parties these type of things so that they have more socially also they are more engaged then they want their roles and responsibility should be fixed it should not be you know today they are they are asked to to do something but they have strength in some other thing and they are asked to do in some other area so then they want empowerment also so up to so that emotionally they feel very happy when they are given some empowerment also then they want some physical uh, space to some fitness center so that they are during during working hour they keep themselves very agile and active then they want some medical facility also they want some crutch also for for their if especially for women so with small kids they want some crutch also attached and most of the good companies they have these days and they want regular upskilling you know and they want regular healthcare also they want to be checked up from time to time they want total safety also a proper conveyance system proper transportation at late hours when they get, when they go to their homes uh, they should be properly taken care of and if, if time permits you know as per covid they should be allowed flexi timing and work from home so uh, then they should have opportunities to develop mean they should be also sent abroad so to some parent company where if they are subsidiary company there so that people get more and more development and they get long sighted goals thank you very much thank you a lot of points from your team particularly what i liked is the safety part what you brought out the social engagement and the physical fitness and health the employees look at Gretch. bathroom Gretch. verification and other things thank you team thank you. four thank you thank you thank okay. you my team uh, team four i am raju uh, from team 4 and we actually tried listing out both for the interviewer and the interviewee perspective we thought we have seen that there is almost similarities between both of them so i'm just going to mention about do's and don'ts mm. do's number 1 be presentable which means mm. physical dressing body language mm. tone volume pitch these and then you like it or not always have a smile on the face it always helps mm -hmm. and timeliness if you are attending an interview be there 10 minutes in advance so that means you are respecting them and also listen carefully if we listen we can be good communicators and we can play the tune which the which the company is asking us and be always positive and uh, even if a stupid question is asked in interview acknowledge saying that good question i like it you know like be positive you know that's very important and uh, what is the do's is ask a clarification of the culture of the organization very important before getting into it now when coming to don'ts never ever lie because the credibility is at stake both for the employer and the employee and no negative statements it should always be a positive this one no distraction no distractions both from the employer and the employee and there shouldn't be any exaggerations you know because even if it is the you know exaggerating something and then after you realizing it's not true is not good for both of them and uh, it is in the do i forgot one thing it's very important to check in social media the background of the people who are going to interview you because if you know that you will not put your head in a lion's mouth that's from our group 
Thank you. Particularly, I like the social media point. Today, many companies check the social media, the Facebook and LinkedIn and other uh, groups where they are associated so that they know whom they are associated with and what they are doing. That can be an ideal thing. Thank you very much for that particular point. Room five, please. Yeah, good evening. Uh, this is Raj Lakshmi from representing room number five. Uh, so most of the points uh, the other uh, group members have covered and a few of them, uh, what uh, I wanted to highlight here is that we want, uh, what we have discussed is to make the employees uh, uh, feel more comfortable as soon as they reach uh, the interview place and facilitate them and, uh, and make them to settle down and relax so that uh, uh, then explain the vision and mission uh, and uh, what is the scope for uh, them when they come and work in the particular enterprises. And then treat every candidate uh, as if uh, they are our own guest or uh, our own family members like Aditi Devo Bhava. We have to yeah, I, uh, That was wonderful. I think uh, in your group, Mrs. Hani Rai was talking yeah, about was, wonderful point. point. Aditi yeah. Devo Bhava. So yeah, that is something you also treat them uh, yeah, whether wonderfully. Whether we are going yeah. to select them or not, we have to treat a human being first as they are a human being. And then after once they are settled down, then we have to test them with uh, all their, uh, 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 their uh, calibers and their uh, uh, credentials. And then either through orally or through a written test, once they are selected, then we have to introduce all other facilities, whatever the benefits plus minuses of the organizations. So this is what uh, we have discussed from our room. Thank you. Wonderful points. Thank you very much. Here, first and foremost thing, what I wanted to share is, see, any good organization needs good employee. Similarly, Every prospective person who is applying needs a good job. Correct or wrong? There is no one-up position that is there. Mutual partnership. This is one aspect, whether you are an interviewer or you are uh, going for the interview, you need to consider. When you go out for the interview, be confident because you are going to give your skill, your ability for which the company is going to pay while from the employer's point of it, they are giving you the financial part of it, compensation, and they are giving a growth compensation. They are going social recognition by joining a good company. These are some of the points which is very, very essential. So what I really liked, what uh, the Atit Devo Bhava, See, the first impression is the best impression. The organizational culture is known when anyone, whether he's an employee or a customer or outsider, enters a company, how they are treated. This is something which is very important. Second, when it comes to interview, it is not a scrutiny process. It is a mutually understand process, which is very important for people to understand. What it means, the employer need to understand about the employee, the employee need to understand about the organization they are joining. What are the opportunities that is there in the organization, how the organization will help me grow, how I'm going to be, my future is secured, how other facilities are there. This is what an employee always thinks and goes inside. While from the employee side, if you look into it, as many people talked about, they want stability. They don't want for 1,000 rupees, 500 rupees, people jumping like monkeys jumping from one tree to other and becoming unstable. They want people who are loyal. And we also want something which is very, very interesting is, will they be a good team player? Will they be good in their result orientation? Understand KPI and KRAs are very important, so it's okay. These are the aspects which we need to look into it when you are looking for the interview process. Let me just share one, one thought and go to this share screen. 
when I went for a company in Hyderabad, which is an IT company, well-known IT company, I would not like to name it right now because of various reasons. Uh, the way they were treating the people who came for the interview, I was very much impressed. The breakfast, they had coffee vending machine, they had water, they had where the water, hot water, cold water, whatever they had. Then they checked the people are relaxed, the ambience, the environment they created. As someone rightly pointed out, what information you like to know, which you want to know about the organization, all these aspects. And even when I was in the interview panel sitting there, the way they treated the prospective people who would like to join their organization was giving highest respect. That's something I really look forward from most of the organization which is in Similarly, from the employees prior saying, are you thorough in the preparation? Do you have a background knowledge about the organization, their products, their competition, and what is your preparation level? What is your attitude? What you want? Are you very clear? Are you able to clearly communicate with clarity? All these aspects are very, very important when you are going as an employee. There are several factors, but in view of time constraint, I confine this particular aspect of it, which I would like to work on it, right? Um, yeah, this is where, no, this is the one which we are just making the, sorry. Yeah, this is what we were looking at it. Okay, sorry. Yes, as I told you, the interview process need to have a mutual respect there need to be open for discussion. There need to be a congenial atmosphere where the employee is able to understand the employer and the employer is able to understand the employee perfectly. And they are able to, it's like marriage matching. The girl, the groom and the bride both need to understand each other. Then only the marriage will be good. This is what I used to tell in training. When you come for a company, not just something, a one-day affair. It is a lifelong affair, right? It is like a marriage matchmaking. You need to have understanding. And once you come inside the organization, you need to work towards for mutual benefit. Empathy. Help bring the organizational culture even during interview. Someone brought it out very well. The sense of belongingness. That they were power comes or the mutual respect comes. This is something, if you are able to bring about in the interview process, I will tell you, even if they are not selected, they will really enjoy the experience. They'll feel, oh, what a great opportunity I have missed up. And that's how you have to create the interview process when you are building an organization. And you need to look in that particular aspect of it. Lastly, I would like to conclude. A good king, a skillful person like Rama, even he need right employees, right team, correct? He need the monkey team, right from Hanuman to all others. He needed Jambavan, he need even the squirrel. He needs other uh, saying Jadayu so that he can. It's not that Rama was less in valor. He could have fought Ravana like anything, right? But he always exhibited that building a team and building a great organization is always on the long run very great because it is not about you. It is about carrying the legacy of an organization for centuries and centuries together. So with that, I would like to make it out like Rama, build a team so that the team is able to build a bridge for various countries. They are able to expand your business. They are able to bring uh, more customers. They are able to bring more profits and thereby your company becomes a world-class company 
which is one slice which I would like to highlight. There are around about 10 to 12 slides. We have slices that they are there of three hours each. But this time I would like to confine only with this particular short duration on recruitment and employee aspect of it, how the interview process need to go. And I just, uh, I'm open for question and answer session for another, till 8.15 we will have this question and answer session and then I will hand over the floor back to Sapraji. Any questions, I'm open for it. Uh, sir, uh, please, uh, I'm uh, Vineet here. Yeah. Can you uh, show some uh, insight about the employee engagement? Okay. Uh, actually, employee engagement is totally a, a different topic which is there. As I told you, the employee engagement starts with the first impression, the first time they walk inside the organization. Like someone was talking about Atiti Devo Bhava. Yeah, that yeah. is exactly where the employee engagement starts. But there are several other factors which is there and it's an exclusive slice of three hours. So I would like to highlight that as far as this particular day's session which we talked about, giving mutual respect, giving them vision, giving them the respect as a guest they have come who would be your prospective employee are some of the traits the company should look into it when they are uh, engaged uh, employees. There are other factors which we'll look into it. I'm confining it what the discussion we have. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hmm? Any questions? Sir, I have one question. Yeah, Ravi Ji. Can I? Yeah, please, please go ahead. Sir, the one question which normally which comes is that when the, I'm talking about the interview process, when the process is going on, mm -hmm. when the interviewer and the interviewee both are sitting, mm -hmm. uh, can the compensation, suppose the interview asks about the compensation part, can it be discussed on the first uh, uh, first phase or uh, the compensation part can be discussed by an interview or, and the interviewer is supposed to answer the compensation part because sometimes what happens in the organizations I have seen and I have worked with so many organizations where they generally don't answer clearly the compensation part. Okay. And uh, it's that... a very good question. It's a very good question. The one thing I want to highlight is the current, uh, if he is an experienced guy, and this is a situation based. If he's a fresher, we need not talk about it. Once the selection process is there, then we can discuss about the uh, compensation part. But if he's an experienced employee, he's already drawing certain salary, we need to give a clear hint whether what would be the compensation that he is likely to get. You need not exactly mention about it, but every employee who would like to come would like to know about it. I feel it is important for the interviewer to give a hint how much they are likely to get a hike or not get a hike so that the employee can also clearly take a decision about joining the organization. Because after conducting the interview, after going through two, three rounds and then say, whatever the current salary you are drawing, that is what we are going to give. It doesn't make any sense. So in case of experience, it's a different ball game and it's a fresher, it's a different ball game. I hope I've answered your query. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, perfect, sir. perfect. I've got it, sir. Got it. Anything else? Looks like no more questions. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. In fact, as I told you, this time when it comes to the success of organization building world class, this has been confined exclusively only to recruitment. There are several facets when it comes to organization development. 
there are 12 slices of three hours each which are there which starts with organizational culture the vision mission and the values and uh, we look at the resource utilization products branding marketing several factors are there this time we have confined only to uh, recruitment thank you very much one, and i hand over one, 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 one more thing sir one more thing before i leave you sir one more thing sir kindly please yeah, please so this session was about recruitment or selection because there is a hairline difference between recruitment and selection recruitment okay. is searching for the prospective employees this is yeah. recruitment as far as i know it is a searching sir, part very right sir see as i told you uh, what you talked about the recruitment which leads to selection process okay the background check like many people are talking about the background check you work on it how much experience the interview process itself is to ultimately come down to a state where you are shortlisting it's a filtering process which you work out and there are times there are times where there can be subsequent uh, rounds but usually in today's uh, world fast moving world people do a online interview and then scrutinize and then bring people so that they are able to quickly find them. thank you sir. it is thank something you. like a certificate and certification okay thank you so I would like to hand over the floor back to Rajendra Sapreji. Thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you everyone for your patience. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It was nice presentation. Sir. Excellent session. You, Excellent session, Sapreji. Excellent session. Very nice. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much, sir. That was a great time hearing you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Yeah. So I thank uh, Mr. Suresh Amratnam for the wonderful insight uh, uh, delivered to us about um, building the organization and more specifically on uh, the, the, this particular slice of recruitment and get onboarding of the right employees. Uh, I also thank each and every one of you for a wonderful participation. So together we were able to actually learn from each other's experience out here. Uh, tomorrow uh, at the same time, 6.15 p.m., uh, we will resume the series of sessions uh, and tomorrow's topic is capital gain taxation uh, by our own DMT team member, Ms. Raj, Raj Lakshmiji. So we will uh, uh, please do register and uh, uh, do join tomorrow's program as well. Thank you, everyone, uh, for a wonderful session here. Thank you, Rijandarji. Thank you very much. And for Thank the newcomers, you. I want to highlight she is a chartered accountant who specializes on taxation. Yes, so you will indeed. gain a more by attending this session. This is for those who are coming for the first time to this platform. Yes. Thank you.